Wonderful. Welcome to St. Tim's on the Road for 2020. If you're joining us for the first time, uh, you may not have heard my speech about how much I miss going to camp, and I'm sure that a lot of you do to uh, you as well. Uh, we actually have uh, a camper coming here to Annunciation in Rochester mm -hmm. today to join us, who I'm sure will be uh, telling us a little bit about how much he uh, wishes he was there. A couple weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago now, Presitetta and I went up to camp to Oswagachi and stayed for three days uh, just because I really missed being there uh, this summer. So today, uh, we've taken St. Tim's on the road to Annunciation uh, in Rochester, and we have Father Angelo Mago with us uh, today, who's graciously agreed to be with us uh, for this uh, sort of uh, informal uh, broadcast. It's as informal as camp is. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> So we hope that you enjoy yourselves, and we're going to start with our prayers, uh, St. Timothy Camp on the Road 2020 Prayers. Um, this is on the website as well as on the YouTube uh, announcement, uh, but if you didn't get this or didn't download it or don't have it, you can just pray along with us as we pray together. Uh, and do the scripture readings. Now we're going to do the scripture readings for today, so they're not on the printed version, but, uh, but you can listen in uh, to the scripture readings for today. So let's stand together and we'll begin our day with prayer. Blessed is our God always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O God, glory to you, heavenly King, comforter, the spirit of truth, who are present everywhere, filling all things, treasury of good things, and giver of life. Come and dwell in us, cleanse us of every stain, and save our souls, gracious Lord. Mm. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions and wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. You may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part you will make me to know your wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall become whiter than snow. Make me hear the joy and gladness that the bones of which you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me, but restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and the sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from blood guiltlessness, O God, the God of my salvation. My tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, these, O God, will you not despise. Do go in your good pleasure to Zion, build the walls of Jerusalem, and then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness with whole burnt offerings and they shall offer bulls upon your altar. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill to all. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord, King, Heavenly God, Father, Almighty, Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you who take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you who sit at the right hand of the Father, and have mercy on us. For you only are holy, only you are Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And each day we bless you, and we praise your name forever and unto ages of ages. 
Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. I said, Lord, have mercy upon me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, to you have I fled. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. For you are the source of life, and in your light we shall see light. Continue your mercy to those who know you. Lord, grant to keep us this day without sin. Blessed are you, Lord, God of our fathers. Your name is praised and glorified throughout the ages. Amen. Let your mercy, Lord, be upon us as our trust is in you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Lord. Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Your mercy, Lord, endures forever. Turn not away from the works of your own hands. To you belongs praise. To you belongs worship. To you belongs glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence, the Father from all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate with the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and he suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and who spoke through the prophets. In one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the ages to come. Amen. It is truly right to bless you, the Theotokos, ever blessed and most pure, and the mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim. Incorruptibly you have given birth to God the word. We magnify you, the true Theotokos. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive our sins, Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who Lord, art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. At all times and every hour you are worshipped and glorified in heaven and earth. Christ our God, long in patience, great in mercy and compassion, you love the righteous and you show mercy to sinners. You call all to salvation through the promise of the good things to come. Lord, receive our prayers at this present time. Direct our lives according to your commandments. Sanctify our souls, purify our bodies, and set our minds aright. Cleanse our thoughts and deliver us from all sorrow, evil, and distress. And surround us with your holy angels that guided and guarded by their host. We may arrive at the unity of the faith and the understanding of your ineffable glory. For you are blessed unto the ages of ages. Amen. Wisdom, let us attend. The reading is from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Sophia, brethren, brethren, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory, as if thou hadst not received it? Now ye are full, now ye are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. Peace be unto you, the reader. 
Glory to thee, O God, glory to thee. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all of you. And with your spirit. The Gospel is according to St. Matthew. Let us be attentive. Friday of the 16th. It was almost there. Thursday, Friday of the 16th. The Lord said this parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net which is thrown into the sea and gathers fish of every kind. And when it is full, men draw it ashore and sat down and sort, sort the good into vessels, and they throw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will come out to separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, and there men will weep and gnash their teeth. Have you understood all of this? And they said to him, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out his treasure of what is new and what is old. And when Jesus had finished saying these parables, he went from there, and coming to his own country, he taught them in his synagogue. Glory to you, O Lord. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. So the, uh, the epistle and the gospel reading for today have a couple of confusing points in them. I know that that epistle reading seems like it's, um, it's almost impossible to understand. You guys can have a seat if you'd like to. Our uh, camper is here. That's wonderful. Um, the, uh, the, 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 what, what St. Paul wants to do when he writes to the Corinthians is he really wants them to understand the great things that they have been given by God. They have, they have the gospel, they have healing, they have access to the will of God, they have the scriptures, they have all of these wonderful things that have been given to them. And yet he says to them, make sure that you don't, uh, uh, that you don't, that you're not proud, that you don't think too highly of yourself. Because it's when you think highly of yourself, too highly of yourself, that you destroy what the gospel has to offer you. So he says, you know, you, you, you have these wonderful blessings from God in the church and in the faith, and yet you walk around as if you're the ones who have, uh, who have somehow acquired them and earned them or something like that. And he said, don't do that. You want to understand yourself as being in, in debt to God. God has given you these things freely and has, has given you the opportunity to earn, has not to earn, but to enjoy his grace and his favor. And so when you approach all of, all of the faith with that kind of an attitude, with an attitude of humility, then you're able to not only have it benefit yourself and your family and those around you, but it benefits the entire world when we regard uh, the gospel and the church in uh, the proper light. And so, and you read the gospel, this gospel about the final judgment. Uh, right, in the preparation of the, 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 to be prepared, always to be prepared. Mm. And uh, how, how do we always be prepared, I guess I would ask. So, uh, how do we be prepared? Well, hold up, let me, uh, 
get a mask that actually I can breathe through. <laughs> we put on our masks because we have visitors here today. So, uh, um, Father and I didn't have them on before, but we will now. We want to be as careful as possible. We do want to be. We do want, and that's part of uh, that's part of preparation, right? You bought your mask, so you are so you are prepared. Uh, My the, clergy black mask. Clergy My black. Mask. Ooh, very nice. I like that. Just so, so, and with the Saint Tim's uh, shirt, I like that too. That's <laughs> that's good, right? Nico, you recognize that, right? <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, not to not to delay this uh, too much further, but sure. uh, the act of preparation is always important in anything that you do. Certainly, in a certainly when I was in the military, our motto was, you know, that we have to be prepared for all possible contingencies. When I was in the corporate world, you know, we again had to prepare our manufacturing facilities for whatever contingencies we were going to see there. We had to prepare our testing. So the, the church is going to be the same way, except that in the case of the military, we're preparing for conflict. At General Motors, we're preparing to deliver a vehicle. Now the preparation we're talking about is something more personal and obviously then deals with our soul. So that preparation, unfortunately, we don't take as serious as we do some of the other things that we prepare for in life, like making breakfast or going to work, things like that. And so Christ in his Gospels is always reminding us that unlike the ten virgins and the, who forget to light their lamps, that we must be prepared in a state of constant readiness because neither one of us, unless you have some secret message no. about when you're going or when we're going. I'll tell right? you if I do. Okay, good then uh, we have no idea of when that time is coming. And even Jesus Christ himself said, and I do not know the hour of the Father. So that only then puts us in a state where we can be in a constant state of preparing our souls so that may, we may be then hopefully received into the kingdom of heaven and to receive this grace that St. Paul talks about. Yeah, great. Great, so wonderful uh, scriptures that we hear today. Uh, every single day in our church, there are uh, fresh pieces of scripture that we, we can read and try to gain as much uh, from them as possible. So here we are at um, Annunciation in Rochester. I don't know how many of you have had the opportunity to actually visit this parish, this beautiful church, and and this, uh, the nave of this church, which is so unique. Um, I was just, as we were praying, Father, I was looking at the icon that's above the altar table here. This is an icon of what? Uh, straight up in, in front. Yeah. And I guess before I start, uh, this is uh, one of the few churches that uh, actually uh, uses mosaic designs. Yeah. I know St. Sophia's in Washington has, uh, has also mosaic designs. Uh, most of the churches, and certainly the church that I grew up in, Tarpon Springs, had the regular cloth iconography. So this is this is first off something that is very rare and very and very beautiful. Um, and you'll, in a large perspective, you'll notice that that uh, this particular church used two iconographers, one from Italy and then one from Greece. So there's two different styles of even iconography in the mosaic style. But certainly what we're looking at here, Nico, did you want to explain that? You can at least tell me who the central character is. There we go. There we go. So the central character there being then Jesus Christ, and in his descent is lifting up then both Adam and Eve as then the, uh, the, as, as the first in, in anticipation then of us being lifted up into heaven. So this is the resurrection. The resurrection. This is the icon of the resurrection. Over at St. Sophia's, we have an icon of the Theotokos. That seems to be... A much more common. So much this more is, common. Right, yeah. right. But so, this is uh, unique. Um, so, the, so that icon, that's done. You, you were talking about the two different styles. Even as, even as I look over on the side, I can see a, a significantly different style. What is... What is this icon on the side? So, uh, so arching the resurrection icon then is the event of the Pentecost. 
And uh, clearly you can see then the flames that are on top. You can see obviously then the, then the, the apostles. But um, there is, uh, whereas uh, uh, Greek iconography, Byzantine iconography, the people are much more, uh, are much more gaunt, let's say. Uh, certainly in an Italian or a Romance style, the faces are a little bit fuller. They look like they've had a better meal than the Greeks have had. <laughs> so, <laughs> so spaghetti. <laughs> Yes, they, they, uh, that's one thing I've noticed there is that the, the, the faces on those look much more realistic. Uh, right, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's much more of a clarity there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could, if you saw somebody out in public who looked like that, you would say, okay, well, they, they look like the icons in the church, but you, we can't even imagine somebody looking like the icon of Christ. Correct, correct. That so, would be, I don't know what you would have to do to your face to make it look that way. So, so there, are, but there are there are reasons for that in iconography. There are reasons to make the person look not a part of this world, right? Right, because uh, because again, uh, they have those that are depicted have entered into into again the church. Um, uh, the church triumphant, and so having received now this idea of their of their perfected bodies, we who remain are in the church militant, and that does show at least in the icon it shows the struggle that we are supposed to be going through in our lives. Each one of us receives a different struggle, but but that struggle is brought about through the uh, through the, the harshness of the faces of the icon, and, and even to the extent of you know that the arms are not full and the the feetness are not full. It's uh, it's also uh, it's also in just an interesting note here uh, in terms of the iconography. Uh, if you can remember, I don't know if Bishop, uh, if our Metropolitan Nicholas did this to you, but uh, when we first entered, when I first entered into the uh, into the metropolis of Detroit, he brought me up before the two icons here, and he says, "I want you to look at John the Baptist, and I want you to look at Jesus." He said, "In this metropolis, our beards are like Jesus, not like John the Baptist." So that's Keeps the beard trim looking, not that long, right? So, oh. <laughs> Can't you tell he did not say that? Apparently, so, apparently. So, um, Nico, do you want to come on up? Good. So you, we have to stand here because of the microphone. But uh, thank goodness you got to come and be with us today. It's wonderful. Come on over. Come on over here. Great to see you. Good to so, see you. Nico, uh, Nico Antonio is certainly one of my uh, certainly one of my my uh, my better altar captains. Uh -huh. I don't want to call him an altar boy, but he's one of the better altar captains. He's certainly been going to camp uh -huh. a long time before I ever got here. Yeah. So each of us, Father David, you know, obviously Nico and I know mm -hmm. him through the church here and seen him up at camp. But yeah. uh, that's why I thought you'd be a great representative to come here. And how many years did you have you gone to camp? Uh, four, I know. Four years. Four years, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought it was more because I, I you know, I've gotten to see you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. See you. I guess maybe it's because I come. We come here and see you, mm -hmm. so that it's it's like I see you more often. Um, so four years at camp, yeah. and uh, well, tell me what what's your favorite part of camp? What do you look forward the, to the most? Remember uh, the answer is seeing your priest there. That's the correct answer. Yes. Okay, yeah, most likely that. Well, after number one, seeing <laughs> What's your number priest two? there. What's number two? <laughs> um, probably just like, I really like uh, going back to the campsite with like a good camp group, you know, because we like, I like to have the fire and tell the stories and just hang out with them at night. And then like, you know, high ropes is another, another big one. I really enjoy that. High ropes. Yeah, high ropes. Yeah. I really enjoy that. You know, just all the fun camp activity is really nothing you can go wrong with. Yeah, sorry, really, really nothing. nothing so, you can go wrong so, with. so when you when you sign up for things, uh, which, like which which one do you tend to sign up for? Which, but besides, well, everybody goes to high roads, right? Yeah. Okay, so but then there are the choices mm -hmm. that you can make. What what ones do you like the best? Uh, I'll do tubing. Um, oh yeah. Uh, what else is there? Um, the biking, the oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do all the hikes. I'll go canoeing, kayaking, tubing, all the fun stuff, you know. 
Uh, the one thing that I don't do is horseback riding. <laughs> it's just I just don't like riding horses. So. <laughs> like riding horses. Not really. Cause I, I got they make us clean them too sometimes. So yeah. So pass the water test because if you can't, then you can't do anything. But, so. It's too much like work. Yeah. <laughs> Was fun too. So now you have you have some Syracuse history too, right? I do. I've okay. gone to his church. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I was there from uh, uh, to, uh, you know, when I was born to like ten years old, and then I moved here. Oh, you moved to Rochester. Like everybody's moving to Rochester. Everybody's <laughs> moving away from Syracuse. <laughs> just to join the group. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I, so you were there till age ten. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So the the heights now. In canoeing, you know the J strokes. Mm -hmm. the, the, you can do this. Uh, I think so. You can so you can steer if you're yeah. on the back. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Good. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. And like they let us, you know, jump in the lake sometimes if we have some extra time. From the canoe. Yeah, and we, we can swim around and stuff. There's fishing too. I don't know how to fish. I I suck at fishing, but um, you know, they can obviously teach you like how to fish and stuff. That's uh -huh. really fun. You've gone. You've done it there. Yeah, but I caught nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's uh, why they call it fishing, not catching. <laughs> so I didn't realize I didn't realize that there's a there's a lake there. I've only been there one. I've only been there one time. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, uh, I've in uh, in Flint. I was uh, at the parish there. I was there ten years. So I know Rose City really well. And so I was really kind of curious to see what say how St. Timothy's compares. So there is there is a uh, there is quite quite a bit of similarity between how the how the camps run. Mm -hmm. So like uh, uh, are like do they have dances too? Because again, oh, yeah. I've only been the one year and I had to leave early. So are there dances that they have there too? Yeah. yeah. So the last day we have a big Greek dance on the last day, and it's really fun. Everybody gets dressed up, and you know we go into the pavilion. We all do this big dance for like few hours and it's probably that's probably my favorite part of the entire thing actually awesome i awesome. really enjoy that awesome. part it's so fun should yeah. i ask how's the food the I food. Eaten there yet. well you fast while you're there so we have no meat we have no meat the entire week but oh. they make some really oh. good food like we have the pe they make pizza quesadillas oh and all oh. that stuff it's it's really good There's, you, know, you won't be disappointed awesome awesome yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. Cool. it is too bad that we have to fat this was the one year when we were actually going to be there Without yeah. a fasting. Without period. a fasting. Yeah. <laughs> no. we, were, we were there, I think, July, what, 5th to 11th or whatever. It right, was. right, right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. And uh, I, was, I was really looking forward <laughs> to that because she really, um, you know, she'll say this to me a bunch of times when we're at camp. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, I wish I could make meat for you, you guys. Cause, but, uh, now, your younger brother. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, he's yeah. he went to camp too, right? He did. Okay, yeah. all right. So, what did he think of? I mean, like, if how young do you have to be to go to, or how young? What's like the cutoff age? Because sometimes I get parents that ask, "Can my kid go?" So, what's the age for going well, to camp? Well, I think the starting age is seven, but what? I okay. I, re I think it's really based on like like how your kid is like so i mean like i went at 11 and before that i was like scared to go to camp just because i didn't want to be away from home for a whole week okay so um i would say just you know until your kid's comfortable with going i would say you know oh yeah. definitely talk about that because Smart. when i was in flint i really had an issue with this that a lot of the campers that had never gone that yeah. was their one thing they says oh i don't want to go to i don't want to go to camp it's, i've never been away from home so how long did it take you because I already know the answer to this, but I want to hear from you. How long did it take you once you got to camp to say, yeah, I'm good, I'm going to stay? Literally the first day. The first day? Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, like, I got there, it was kind of like, and eh, But, like, I had, I had like, all, I, ever, I knew everybody. So, um, I knew, like, Ari, and, like, I had my cousin Alina there, too. So, uh, no, yeah, just after, you probably get there. A little nervous at first, totally understandable. But then, like after after that, after you break in, you most likely want to stay. So. Okay, all right. And then you meet you meet a lot of I'm I'm imagine you meet then uh, a lot of kids that are from you know other parishes mm -hmm. that you guys get to be good friends and then oh, kind, yeah. of, kind of expect that as you you know go into the next no, year. No, that's, that's the best part. Like I like there was kids from Buffalo my first year that I didn't know, and now like every year I look forward to seeing them. Awesome, so. cool. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes it, it, it. I think that a lot of times, my what when I when I talk to kids who haven't been to camp, 
their their perception is that they're going to get to camp everybody else is going to know what to do and where to be and things like that and they're going to kind of be lost and it it isn't really like that no is it? i mean there's the kids who've been there before obviously you know like what'll happen in like the first you know day as soon as they get there like you'll have to do a swim test and stuff but then like you they don't know how the rest of the week's going to happen like they don't know all the future events that's going to happen throughout that week. You might sign up for certain events and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this event, but you don't know what's going to happen. Okay. So, uh, so like I say, everybody's basically on the same page, really. Nobody knows what's going to happen throughout that week. So, <laughs> so <laughs> by so by the end by the end of, of the week or two weeks, however long that you stay, mm -hmm. everybody is like, yeah, I don't want to go now. Now you're all pumped up about you know going next year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah of course. Like you say, be prepared, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we never know what's going to happen uh, right. when we get to camp. Uh, we had no idea that this year there would be no camp. Yeah, that um, was a bummer. Yeah. So, Nico, what, do you, what are you doing this summer? Um, I'm hanging out with friends. I'm working. And uh, I'm really just, you know, trying to enjoy the summer with as much as I can due to the, you know, circumstances we have. So... Do you hope that do you hope that school will be back in session in September? Yeah. Or are you okay with distance learning? Or I mean, I would I was okay with distance learning, but I would rather have school go on with you know the limited things we can do and see my friends and stuff every day rather than yeah. sit in my room and go on my computer and do everything. Yeah. 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 So you think you think your parents are thinking about hey you know it's good Nico go back to school. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, you can kind of ask her. <laughs> so, yeah. I know that that's what my parents would say. They'd be like, yeah, okay, you need to be out of the house. They want to keep me. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a very small house. I cannot imagine being, in, uh, being locked away with my parents. Um, I guess I would have made the best of it, but there it is. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming, Nico. Of course. Hey, Nico, and, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Of course. Really, any time, really. Sorry? I said any time. Beautiful. Thank you so thank much. You so and, you know, we look forward to seeing you at camp next year. Of and, course. Uh, and uh, I have a feeling that at some point in time, you're going to be a wonderful counselor as well. So, uh, uh, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Look forward to that. It'd be nice. Yeah. All right. Thank Great. you so much. Okay. Yeah, bye. All right. All right. Thanks, Nico. Thank you. All right. Well, you know what? We've covered our icons. We've talked about our icons. We prayed together. We talked about camp, and uh, I know it's a little early, but uh, you know we can call it a day now. So, um, thank you very much for joining us for uh, Saint Tim's on the Road for today. Uh, next week, I know I'm back in Rochester, but I'll be at Holy Spirit with Father James Barons. And uh, we'll enjoy ourselves again a few minutes together, uh, enjoying ourselves as much as we can, uh, even at this time when uh, camp has been uh, canceled for one year. Hopefully it's for one year only. So uh, thank you again for joining us, and God bless you. And also, uh, before we close, I do want to thank you, Father David, for taking on this project. Because, you know, a lot from Rose City, kids love camp. I mean, a lot of them live for camp. And this is a, this is a pretty tragic thing. Yeah. So I appreciate the fact that you're taking out your own personal time to make this kind of uh, Led Zeppelin tour around the... Uh, <laughs> I only say that because next year it'll be the return of the retirement tour of Father <laughs> David Smith. The retirement tour. Uh, but I really appreciate, I, want, I wanted to say that, uh, that we're thankful that, that you're taking the show on the road and that you are promoting what is one of our, our uh, best community efforts that we have with our church youth. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you, and I look forward to being with you again in person. All right, and we'll see you all soon.